that sort of advanced desire. So there's an initial desire, an advanced desire, and then there's an ignorance. And only those three of all of the twelve links are limited emotions in the human mind. Okay? Ignorance, a kind of desire which is beginning, and a kind of desire which is grabbing. All right? Those three negative emotions in a human being trigger karma. Okay? And there are two links which represent karma in the wheel. All right? What's the first one of those two? Yeah, par at, at link number two. Okay? That's called the sanskara or fresh karma. This person is making new karma. Uh, for example, I don't know. I don't know. Let's say at some point in your life uh, you were attracted to a, a man or a woman and then you uh, you did something to upset a relationship that they already have. Okay? So we're allowed to, it's fine to hit on somebody if they're free. <laughs> All right? If they're committed to someone else, then that's a bad karma. Okay? So you could say, uh, you see somebody, you talk to them, you find out that they're married or they're in a committed relationship, and then you don't stop. You keep, you keep trying to interest them in you. That would be uh, the second link. That would be a fresh karma. All right? That would cause a, a fresh karmic seed to be planted in your mind at number two. There's one other link which is karma. This one. Yeah, yeah. Ten. yeah it's number ten, Chukasipa in Tibetan, which is a pregnant woman. It means that this karma is about to produce a rebirth, which happens in big number now. So these are, this karma is about to go off. It's about to explode, all right? Like a very pregnant lady. All right? This karma is, is ready to produce uh, some kind of suffering in life. This could be uh, two years later, uh, you are in a relationship, and then uh, the person comes home and they start texting somebody all the time with a big smile on their face and hiding the phone when you say something. Okay? And then you get nervous, right? That means the karma has uh, the karma has sat in your mind for two years and then it started to open up. So that's uh, me you know, that's messing around with someone else's relationship at earlier, a couple of years earlier. And then this is a karma which is ripening this year. Uh, in your own relationship, to hurt your own relationship, okay? So, what we've been talking about is what is it, what is the force which is acting under the ground when you plant a seed, you know, I, I planted seeds for my garden already in Arizona, okay? And uh, I know they won't come up until the summer, you know, it's an act of faith, right? <laughs> uh, I plant them now, and I'm very careful, I, I give them you want to know my secrets? Uh, <laughs> Starbucks coffee. Uh, and they like uh, Epsom salts, okay? Which uh, they provide a doctor and a but they do something good. And then, uh, you know, lots of, uh, what do you call it? Mulch. And then there's the mulch. Just like fertilizer, systemic fertilizer, okay? So anyway, the secret is that. Uh, Starbucks coffee. You go to Starbucks and you say, give me five pounds of used coffee. And they give you that used coffee. They're happy to get rid of it. And you can have a regular supplier if you develop them. Okay? So I, I, I make this very toxic mix for my seeds. And I'm very careful about it. You know? And it, some Epsom sauce, you know, some systemic fertilizer. And there's some other things I'm not telling you. <laughs> and then uh, you, you plant a seed. It's very weird. It's very dumb. You know, you just stick your finger in the ground and drop the seed and it'll cover it. It takes like a second. It takes one second, you know. And then uh, you go, you don't sit there and watch. You go into the house. And you wait until June, you know. <laughs> and then something will happen. And the mystery of life, right, the mystery is what's happening under the ground while that seed is there. After you stick the seed in and cover it and put the Starbucks on top. Uh, and then from the time, that time up to the time that it, like a salandula, starts to grow, right? And there's a big, beautiful flower. What happened under the ground? And it's sort of a, 
a deep mystery, right? Something is impossible is happening. Somehow, the Starbucks stuff gets under the ground and touches the seat. It must be the case, right? I don't know how it works. And somehow the Epsom salts get under the ground and they touch the seat. And there's some kind of contact between the seed and the coffee grounds and the water, right? And then it wakes up something in the seed. I don't know how it happens, but it's like somebody's shaking the seed and saying, wake up, wake up, you know? And then the seed's like, uh -huh. And then uh, it wakes up. It's a mysterious kind of, of a plant's life, of a flower's life, right? Uh, the same is true for your partner and what's happening with your partner. Your partner started texting a little too much, and you're getting nervous, okay? And uh, they're sitting there and, and texting all day, and then you're wondering, what has happened between the time that you were interested in somebody else's partner and the time that your partner starts texting? What, what happened to the seed? The seed entered your mind. By what medium? How did it enter your mind? How did the seed in number two get in your mind? You could say by action, but how did it get inside your mind? How does it seem? You are talking to someone else's partner, and you've realized it's someone else's partner, and you don't stop. You keep hitting on them, right? Who records the scene? You do, but how? You watch yourself. You're watching yourself all the time. You have a permanent video camera uh, behind your eyes, right? And your fingers, and your ears, and you are, you are the witness. Okay? There, it, you don't need St. Peter to keep a book up near the pearly gates. Okay? You have your own consciousness. Yeah. Maybe St. Peter is, a, is an, a metaphor for your own consciousness. I don't know. Maybe it was originally that. But you don't need some outside person keeping a record of your good deeds and bad deeds. Okay? Your own mind records them. Your awareness of what you are doing records a, a deed. Okay? So if you were there, if you were listening and watching when you were hitting on the other person's partner, it's planned by watching and by listening, okay? And you're always there. So in Buddhism, unfortunately, it doesn't have to sneak into your room and close the door and do things that you shouldn't do. Because the witness is always watching. You are the witness. There's no other person. You must not do it in front of other people and at least you can confess it afterwards or something, you know. It doesn't have to hide things because it's recorded by you being there to watch yourself do it. And that's how a seed is planted in your mind. So I don't know, two years ago, I was on the subway and I'm talking to this lady. The test in Buddhism of fidelity is would you be saying those words if your partner was standing next to you? Would you be saying exactly those words and acting exactly that way, you know, <laughs> uh, if your partner was next to you? That's a mental test in Buddhism. Once you commit yourself to a relationship, which you should do slowly and with great consideration, you shouldn't do it easily. But once you do it, you're supposed to imagine that they're next to you all the time. And then you don't do goo-goo eyes at anybody. Uh, <laughs> You wouldn't do it if they were watching your face. And so if you're on the subway alone, then you, you don't do it. You see what I mean? If you're in a committed relationship. Why? Because it's a sin? Because it, the, the idea of, in Buddhism of sin is very interesting. You know? Is it wrong to hit on somebody else's partner? Why is it wrong? Yeah, because you wouldn't want it to be done to you, and it will hurt you. It will hurt you. Okay? It's not... It's interesting, the definition of bad karma in Buddhism is an action which comes back to hurt yourself. That's morality. If you ask the Buddhist what is good and what is bad, any action which would come back and hurt you is evil, is wrong. Okay? So it's dysfunctional. You know? It's like, if you want to have a nice partner, nobody wants to have a partner who's not loyal. Right? I don't think so. Nobody wants to have a partner who's, who's not committed to them. Then nobody should ever fool around with other people's partners, because that's how you plant the seed. That's where it's coming from. It's not coming from anywhere else. Okay? So the only person who is in morality of Buddhism is the litmus test is, would it come back to hurt you? Okay? Uh, so in uh, link number 
too. Uh, you are you are witnessing yourself do a dumb thing. Okay. If you understood where loyalty in your partner came from, would you be making that? Yeah, you are blind. Okay? You have to be blind to make a bad karma. And that's why number one is the blind man. Ignorance. Okay? What's ignorance? You don't understand that. By the way, if you succeed in hitting on this person, why did you succeed? Because you were good before that. You were self-controlled before that. Okay? It's not that you said something to them and they agreed to fool around with you. Okay? You were loyal a year before that. And that's why you get to meet this person on the subway, okay? Uh, and and you don't understand that, okay? You don't understand that. So you do something hurtful, and then that will come back to you later, okay? It will hurt you, okay? So at number two, we did it on the subway, and then two years later, we have the pregnant woman, all right? Now, what I promised to teach you, what I promised to talk about was, What's happening, what forces are at work in the human mind, under the ground, between two years ago and today, okay? As in the garden, when a seed is, is being uh, triggered, right? It's being armed and set off uh, by things that are nutrients that are dropping down to the ground and water, right? Then what is it in the human mind that can trigger a seed? And why are we exploring this question? Uh, we said that if you knew how, uh, we said that every human being has countless things, all right? Uh, if you did a kind thing a year ago, okay? If you said something nice to somebody a year ago, all right? You said, uh, you know, I like how you sing. You know, I like your song. You sing very well. Okay? And, and if, you, if you said it, a true praise to someone, True kind, a true kind word, right? That karma doubles every 40, sorry, 24 hours, okay? Each, each karmic seed in your mind doubles every 24 hours, okay? So in, in 20, I have irises. Anybody have irises? You don't have, you're in Lebanese, do you? Uh, I have these irises. You plant a bow, okay? And then uh, they grow. If you don't cut them, if you let the leaves grow and suck sunlight, the whole year, right? And they will. If you don't cut them down, then uh, they feed the ball. The sunlight feeds the ball, and then they split. The ball splits like a cell in the human body. It splits, and then it split. Each of those splits, and then each of those splits, and then next year you have like 20 flowers, where you only have one iris. And then after a couple of years, you have to dig it up and spread them because they will they will prevent each other from having food. It's too many kids in the garden. It's too many bulbs together. You see what I mean? Uh, karmas are the same, okay? Karmas in your mind split every 24 hours. Okay? If you said a kind word to someone a week ago, I don't know, it's something like a thousand now. It's something like a thousand seats now. Why am I talking about that? Every one of us has millions and millions of seeds on open seeds are laying in our consciousness, okay? Who decides which one opens tomorrow? Okay? What decides which one opens tomorrow? What I'm trying to say is each one of you, we talked about five goals that I've noticed people have in traveling, you know, we, we have ACI in 85 cities, okay? Uh, I travel to, I don't know, how many cities in here? 20? 30? 20 to 30 cities in the world, right? And uh, I listen to people, and they have the same questions. People want the same things. Uh, first thing is financial independence, okay? Nobody wants to be in debt. They would like to have a nice house, a nice car. They would like to have enough money that they don't have to think about money ever again. <laughs> and I'm not saying they have gold spigots on their toilets and stuff like that, <laughs> although I've seen that. Uh, <laughs> You know, I'm just saying it would be nice to live your life with enough money to do anything you want, you know, and not excessively and not in a greedy way, but especially in donating money and, and supporting other people's dreams and projects. It would be nice to have sort of a, a limitless pocket, you know. Just 
so you can help other people. You know, that, that's a beautiful thing to have. Okay? Many people ask me that. It's interesting, the people in the world, China, or Buenos Aires, or, or Moscow, they all, I'd say 80% of the people who, who want money want it so they can help other people. It's kind of cool. Okay? You wouldn't guess that. Of all the businessmen we teach, or, or like that, business people around the world, I guess about 80% want to become wealthy because they want to help other people. And you wouldn't expect that, but that's the way it is. So that's maybe the first goal that people have. Second goal is uh, it's lonely to live in a big house with gold bathroom spigots and uh, have no one there. You know? So people would like to have a family. They would like to have a partner. Uh, of course, all over the world, uh, people would like to have a partner. Everyone would like to share their life with someone else. Someone to come home and tell about your day, right? Especially if you eat with, I think it's very lonely to eat by yourself. You know, you cook for an hour, you eat for five minutes by yourself, then you, then you clean for half an hour. <laughs> and uh, it's all silent. And uh, the eating is especially poignant. You know, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to eat fast or sorry. I don't need science fiction But anyway, uh, people would like to have a nice life. That's a human, that's a human. And it's a good, According to the higher teachings of Buddhism, that's a good instinct. Uh, two people who are committed to kind acts can do much more than one person. They can do more than twice as much. They can do like ten times more. If you have a beautiful partner, then together you can serve the world. Okay? Uh, the Buddhism says that. And then uh, third goal, I think everyone would like to have youthful energy. Nobody would like to have a sickness or a bad back be tired all the time, like that. We would all like to have energy all the time. I think then once you get the basic requirements of life, right, once you get those three things, people want uh, peace in their mind. You can have a partner and not have peace. <laughs> <laughs> Mentally, right? You can have an uh, object and a partner and you can have a beautiful body and not have peace in your mind, right? So we would like to have peace on top of the others. By the way, the idea that you should choose between those four is to me ridiculous. It's just foolish. It's a sour grapes thinking. You know, okay, I think I might be able to reach peace, but not the partner. Or, you know, maybe I could do money, but I'll never be young again. You know, those are all stupid, okay? You shouldn't think like that. Then finally, of course, we would all like to have world peace. And we would like to see peace in the um, we have already, each one of us, all the seeds in your mind to see all five things. You already have millions of seeds in your mind to have all of those things happen in your life. Okay? You just need to put the Starbucks coffee on them. Okay? <laughs> you need to sprinkle something on them that makes those seeds grow. Okay? And that's all I want to say in these three days. That's all I want to talk about. Uh, we will talk about limbs number eight and nine. In Tibetan, it's called Geva Sepa and Gupa Lama. Geva Sepa, the man eating, and Gupa Lama, the monkey grabbing fruits from the tree. Okay? These two are the water and the Starbucks coffee and the Epsom salt, which turn fresh karma into karma which is about to explode into what? Financial independence, a beautiful partner, a new partner, or fix your old part, upgrade uh, your old partner, fix them. Whatever problems you have with them, remove those problems. I'll tell you something cool, all right? You, I'll, I'll tell you something very profound, okay? If you have a problem with your partner, like, okay, 80% are like my partner, you know? But after six years, I couldn't teach him to put the toilet seat down. You know, even a monkey you could probably teach to put the toilet seat down in two years. But there's something about my husband, he can't learn it, you know. And then I will give them the kind of solution to that, you know. All right, something more serious. Like, he, he doesn't give me affection anymore. I come home, and uh, he just frankly, I go to, you know, I open up my arms, for a hug, and he, he goes like, 
like this, and then he, he goes on his laptop. You know? <laughs> and it, it, it doesn't even occur to him to give me a hug. He doesn't even think that I might like a hug. You know, much less indicate any interest in a hug. Even to pretend to enjoy a hug, he doesn't even think of it. You know, and he used to, but now he doesn't. You know, so how do you how do you change that kind of thing? You know, what what do you do to change that thing? Uh, you can fix any shortcoming in your partner. Now here's the cool part. You can fix it so well. If I teach you tonight how to get your partner to hug you, and you and you you do the karmic solution, you follow the karmic solution, right? You plant a seed, and then you reap the the results of that seed. That seed is so powerful that when I meet you next time I come back to New York and I say, how's the hugs going? You'll say, huh? And I'll say, you know, remember what you asked me about last last time I was here? And you'll say, I don't remember. And you'll say, I'll say, you know, your husband. Imagine that. You not only fix them, but you forget they had a problem. You both forget they had a problem. Because karma is that powerful. Karma is creating everything. Okay? So, how do we get those seeds to ripen? We all have enough seeds in our mind already to have financial independence, to have a beautiful partner, to fix our old partner, if you already have a partner, to find a partner if you don't have a partner. And then we all have enough seeds in our mind for, for useful energy. You can go to Dharma Mitra's class for two hours and still walk afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> we all did that today. That was really fun, by the way. And I appreciate that. And uh, I also appreciate Cecile teaching a beautiful class. She, she has a special. She should teach next time. I hope she will come and teach dragon dance. Where are you? She has a yoga called dragon dance, which I made her send me a DVD. She went up in her attic, I think. I don't know where it was, and she did the whole thing on a DVD and sent it to me. And I do it in my house like every week, you know, and it's very beautiful. So we were blessed with great uh, yoga teachers, but everyone would like to have that kind of youth and energy to do everything that Don Mitchell wants you to do. All the strange poses, right? <laughs> uh, you have the seeds in your mind to do it already, okay? You already have the seeds. You just need the coffee, the Starbucks coffee and the essence of it. You need number eight and number nine in a good way, okay? Number eight and number nine are nasty. Okay, number eight and number nine are bad. And the wheel is bad. The wheel shows you how we get in trouble. Let's go over eight and nine to understand how negative seeds are. Are sun depa. Say sun. Sun depa. Depa. Sun depa. Sun depa. It means uh, there's a selection process. There's a lottery of seeds in your mind. You have billions of seeds in your mind. Uh, by the end of this evening, some of them will be sun depa. Means do you have those? We went to Taiwan. We were bored. We got in from the airport at midnight. We stopped. Uh, we had to drive four hours to Tai Taichung, Taichung, right? And uh, we stopped at this, uh, you know, 2 a.m. in the morning, uh, the equivalent of the New Jersey Turnpike highway stop thing. And there was this uh, this claw thing you put in a Taiwan dollar, and you pull levers, and the claw goes over all these teddy bears, right? And then you drop the claw and goes like this, and you try to get the teddy bear, and we spent like $20, and we got a 50 cent teddy bear. And, uh, that's Sundepa. That's the meaning of Sundepa. You have hundreds of teddy bear seeds in your mind, right? and there's some kind of energy that comes out, and all these slippery seeds, and it pulls one thing out. It selects a seed, and it arms it like a bomb. It arms it like a nuclear weapon. Okay? This there's something about eight and nine which arms the seeds in your mind, the negative seeds. Okay? And then you have trouble with your husband or whatever. You have trouble. So let's look at how that works. And then we're going to do the opposite. We're going to apply that to the opposite. I think, by the way, when you teach this, which you should, and we'll go over this again and again. We're going to do maybe five, six. We, we got to two links. We got to 1% of the wheel of teaching in three days. Okay? Like some of these things will take years. Okay? It will take many trips 
<laughs> to talk to, to finish the wheel. Okay? Uh, but tonight, let's talk about these two. Let's not leave it as negative. Let's not say this is a, a wheel that tells you, you know, why you're going to die <laughs> with nothing. Okay, because it's true. <laughs> That's what the wheel was designed to do. But Buddha was, and, and many teachers, I think, and I'm, I'm encouraging you not to do this. Many teachers leave it at that. They don't go further. Lord Buddha wanted us to learn to reverse the wheel, to use the power of the wheel for positive goals, right? Learn how you got in trouble and then back up the wheel, back it up, <laughs> and make the opposite happen, okay? That's our goal. By the end of tonight, by party time, uh, we should have enough information to teddy bear, claw the good seeds, and create whatever goal you want in your life, okay? So choose a goal, have a goal in mind. It could be something you haven't reached yet that you want to reach, or it could be something that you, some problem that you have now. Same thing, okay? You can, you can learn. I wanted to learn to play uh, upright bass, and I didn't know how. And uh, I planted the seed, and it just came. Okay? It just came like that. I think it took like two days. Okay. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying it's cool. It's fun. I want you to learn how to do it. Then anything you want to do, you can do. It's cool. It's fun to play jazz. We played at the Paris Jazz Festival <laughs> in a basement with 20 people. <laughs> and then people said, you mean you played in the festival? I didn't say in the festival. <laughs> uh, we played in a basement nearby. <laughs> <laughs> Next year, Cecile's getting us in there. Okay? Okay. So how do eight and nine work? Okay, eight and nine are very basic. Eight is one. Got that? Eight is one. Got that? What is one? Ignorance. What is one in relationship to seeing a, a cute guy in the subway who's got a, a wedding ring on? Mm. What is number one? Number one is like, I, I like to talk to him. He's cute. I saw a movie last week. The hero was married, but they had a bad marriage and they cheated on their wife and lived happily ever after. It's really funny. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> so. Ignorance means, ignorance is looking at the guy and saying, he's cute, you know, let, let me talk to him, I'll say something to him, all right? That's ignorance, okay? It's to think that something good for, could come from that, all right? If he says yes, it's not because you said anything, okay? It's because you were loyal a year ago, okay? It's weird, right? It's kind of weird. Um, <laughs> That's number, so number eight is a, is a way of thinking that I can get things if I take them. The way I get things is to take them. That's number eight. Eight is one. Eight is number one. Eight is misunderstanding how things work. And the whole world, all the time, is misunderstanding how things work. And so they, they suffer. They get old. They have financial problems. And they get divorced. Right? And they have unhappy relationships. The whole world. Everyone in the world. They don't understand how things work. Okay? That's number eight. Eight is not understanding how things work. Okay? It not only plants the potter, it triggers the pregnant woman. Does that make sense? Got it? It not only plants the potter, number two, okay, the first karma. Misunderstanding your world is what selects and triggers the negative seeds in your mind, okay? And it's nothing more than that, okay? If, if you didn't want to have any more problems in your life, the first thing you would have to do is what? Well. Just change how you think. Just change how you get things. Okay? How, how do you get money? How do you get money? Do you get a job? Do you get a job? Which is better, stocks or 
stock investments or property investments? Which is better? It's a dumb question, okay? It's a really foolish question. Many people lose money in stocks, and many people get money in stocks. Many people lose money in property, and many people get money in property. Therefore, it doesn't matter. Which is better for getting a boy, pink lipstick or red lipstick? <laughs> Don't tell me it doesn't matter, because Sephora is there. I see you coming out of, in and out of Sephora. You can't come out of Sephora for less than $300. I know that. You are selecting cosmetics. Will it be Lancome or African Times? Uh, no, you do. You select things because you think it will make a difference, and it makes no difference at all. Okay? If you planted the seed and put on black lipstick, <laughs> everyone would think you were beautiful. I'm not kidding. And if you don't plant the seed and you put on any expensive Lancome lipstick, everyone will say you're overdressed. Or something. You see, got it? It doesn't matter what choices you make in your life. It doesn't matter. Uh, financial choices, partner choices, yoga studio choices, it doesn't matter which one you go to. It really doesn't matter. Okay? Plan to see, go to any yoga studio you want. You will end up thin and strong and beautiful. Okay? Don't plan to see. Go to 12 yoga studios and you will hurt your neck. I'm not kidding. Okay? It doesn't matter which one you go to. It doesn't matter which kind of education you use, and it doesn't matter what kind of training you have and what kind of job you get, and, and what kind of business you enter. It doesn't matter. Plant the seed, and you will succeed at any business. Don't plant the seed, and you won't succeed. Oh, but I saw people succeed who didn't plant seeds. They didn't know they planted seeds. They planted them by accident, and they got an accidental result, and they couldn't repeat it. Okay? And movie stars, great business people, they can't repeat. They say, I don't know what happened. I lost my energy. I, I don't, you know? They didn't understand in the first place why, why the good thing happened. So number eight here is just not understanding. The habit of not understanding keeps us selecting bad teddy bears in your mind. <laughs> okay? Got it? Just the habit of wrong things, wrong things, selects the bad seeds in your mind, all the problems in your life are coming out of your mind, and they were selected by the habit of misunderstanding how stuff works. Got it? Which is number one. Eight is one. Got it? If you nod or go on, you get one step closer to the refreshments. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's the difference thing in between eight and nine? Okay. What's the difference between eight and nine? Eight is a habit of misunderstanding how stuff works. Okay? If you want a boyfriend, how do you get one? If you don't have a boyfriend and you want a boyfriend, how do you... Some lady asked me, okay, can I tell the story one more time? <laughs> she was from New York. Uh, so she came to me, guess what, I'm very successful, I'm an Ivy League graduate, I, I graduated in architecture, I have a very good job, I have a beautiful apartment, uh, you know, expensive apartment, and I love my work. Okay, I have good work, I enjoy my work, and she's also a yoga teacher. So she got everything. But she came to me and said, I don't have a boyfriend. I need a boyfriend. And I said, well, what do you, what do you want me to do? She said, can you do a mole? Okay, can you do a mole? Mole, they know all these guys from New Jersey. They do moles in New Jersey. Uh, so I was trained to do moles in the old comic way. Uh, it's a dice. You throw dice and you predict the future. You predict someone's future. You make choices for them based on the dice. And if you're really old-fashioned, you use the knuckle bones of a sheep. Because everyone's from the steppes of Russia. These guys are all from the steppes. They use sheep bones. And you carve numbers on the sheep bones. And it dies. So the, this lady came to me and said, you're a Buddhist monk. You can do a more. I said, yeah, I'll do a more. Okay, I said, what kind of mole do you want? She says, can you tell me, I want to know where I'm going to meet my boyfriend. Will it be on the internet, or will it be in a dance club? She said, will you do a mole for that? You know? So, 
you know, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. You know, and, uh, but that often happens in my life. So, uh, yes, I'll do more, you know. And um, so she, I get the, you can do a mole in a cup, right? But you can really make a good show of it. And that's important. People believe a good show. You know? So you can use a couple of, what's a couple of? Skull. It's a human skull. Okay? It's half of a human skull. You know? So if you're a big time mower, <laughs> you, uh, you use a human skull. You know? And then you put these sheep knuckles on it. And then you've got to go like this. If you're really going to impress the person, you should do a mantra. Okay. <laughs> and you gotta do it low. Okay. <laughs> and you can show the whites of your eyes until you go. Then you're supposed to throw it. You throw it. You don't just like wind it up. You know, you, you flop it. And then there's this big flop. Sometimes it splits the skull open. That's really dramatic. <laughs> then you, then you, you go. <laughs> and then it's just like, Kishna, where am I going to meet him? You, know, like, you shouldn't say right away, you should make a big deal. Like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, she said, will it be in a nightclub? <laughs> then she's like, oh, that's good. And I said, why? And she said, the kind of boy you be in a nightclub is the kind of boy you meet in a nightclub. <laughs> They won't be loyal. They won't go hang out in the you know? So it's just like, so it's on the internet, right? And I'm like, no. <laughs> and she's like, well, that's good, because those kind of boys love their laptops more than their girlfriend. <laughs> and, then, and then I'm like, she's like, well, where am I going to be? And I said, like, then you have to make a lot of drama. You, know? you turn the light on. And I'm a nursing home. Go to a nursing home. And she was really cute. She was really cute. And she said, uh, Krishna, you don't understand. I said, what? She said, I want a young boy. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I said, no, you don't understand. You have to plant a seed. Plant a seed and do anything. Sit at home. He will knock on your door. I've had people, that happened, that happened to them. Okay? Plant the seed. And, and the boy will come. Because the boy is coming from your mind. We talked about that the first night. Right? The pen. We proved that a pen was coming from your mind. Boyfriends also come from your mind. Plant them and relax. And don't go to clubs. Because they have a lot of smoke and it's, they're kind of dumb. And don't go on the internet because that's also dumb. So plant the seed. Go sit in a park or something. There was a lady in, uh, I'm not allowed to say the city. There was a lady in Eastern Europe in an unspecified country in Eastern Europe. She's the Oprah Winfrey of her country. She's famous in her country. She has a Sunday afternoon show for eight years. And uh, she's known all over the country. Right? And she asked me this question, how do I get a boyfriend? I've been on, on the TV every Saturday, Sunday afternoon for seven years, and everybody in the country knows I don't have a boyfriend. And it's just embarrassing. So I need one. So I told her this thing. And she did the nursing home thing. She went and took care of her mother. And then she was walking down like Fifth Avenue of her country. And she bumped into somebody. Because she was looking the other way and he was looking the other way. And then she looks up and it's this big handsome guy. You know? And uh, they hit it off. And they got, she got married last summer. Last summer. She got married. And we were on her show. Uh, we did like a two hour show. Uh, it's really cute. And uh, it, was a big, it was a big celebration, you know, because she got married. She met the guy. But you see, she didn't find the guy. She planted him. And she could have walked down the other side of the street, and she still would have gone into it. Got it? Like, plant the seed. Ask people how they got their girlfriend or boyfriend or wife or husband. And it's always a weird story. You know, I was on a bus, and I tripped over her purse. And, you know, according to Buddhism, there's no accident. Plant a seed and trip over someone's purse. <laughs> it doesn't matter, okay? And, and they will come. Same with money, and the same with health and strength, okay? And the same with inner peace. 
and the famous Mona piece. They got it. It's very beautiful. She got a partner. You know, she got a beautiful partner. But if she had been doing it the old way, right, she would have gone to the club. That's number eight. Okay. <laughs> she would have thought mm. she could get a boy at the club. That's number eight. And then number nine, she would have gone to the club. That's number nine. Mm. Grasping. Grasping. And she would have fought for a boyfriend. She would have competed for a boyfriend with all the other girls in the class. Okay? That com competition, that grabbing, that attempt to outgrab or faster grab than other people grab is number nine. And that's why you got a monkey trying to get food off a tree. And we're all like that. Mm. We're all like that. Okay? We do that all the time. Okay? Number eight is the wrong attitude. I should go to either a club or or on the internet. That's number eight. Number nine is going to the club and duking it out with the other girls <laughs> over some guy. Okay? No, really. And it's all crazy. And it's all stupid. Okay? Just plant a seed and then you laugh. And you'll bump into the guy on Fifth Avenue. He's rich. He has a house in Berlin. He's a wonderful musician. They're deeply in love. You know, and she planted him. Okay, so that's uh, this wheel represents the, the way we do business in our life. <laughs> we don't understand how stuff works. How does stuff work? What you want in your life, you must make an attempt to supply it to someone else first, and that's the only way you can plant a seed. Okay, it's the only way. So give up all your old ideas about how to make stuff work, okay? You want something? There's four steps, okay? I put a book on your uh, chair. It's not free. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a trip. It's a trip. You did get a book? No. I don't see books. We got it. Book. We got it. Put a page number. Uh, so I'm getting you attached to the book. <laughs> Go to page number 446. Go to page 446. It's in big print. Anyone can see. Mm -hmm. On the left side, it says the four Starbucks steps. Okay? It's the four Starbucks steps. Got it? 446. 446. And they, they're all over the book. I put them in three or four times. These are the four steps. From the Abhidharma Krishna, from the fourth century, in the fourth chapter, uh, say she, Samba, Samba, Jorwa, Jorwa, Kartu, Kartu, she, she, Samba, Samba, Jorwa, Jorwa, Kartu, Kartu. The four ways to make to plant the seed. Okay, the four ways to plant the seed. The four ways to make stuff happen in your life. Okay, this is the good part of the class. Okay, I don't have a clock. I'll keep going if you want to stop me. Do you guys have? 8.30. Have this is not the group to ask for a watch. Okay. I'm supposed to stop at 8.30, right? Am I right? 8.45? AM? Yeah. 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 All right, give me five more minutes. We've got to get through this. All right? This is the answer to your question. Okay? This is number eight and number nine. Done on a good seed. Done on a good seed. Make a partner. Improve your current partner. Uh, get out of debt. Get oxygen money, as much money as you want. Comfortable. And, uh, and we'll get to saving the world also. In, in uh, four, four, five minutes, okay? Uh, number one, this, say what it is you want in your life in a single short sentence, okay? I want a boyfriend. Or I want enough money to be comfortable and help other people. Or I want to be healthy and young and have good energy. Or creative or intelligent. Or I want to have inner peace. I want to have peace in my mind, okay? Or I would like to see a world where there's no poverty and there's no, no war. Say what you want in a single sentence, that's a sheep. In this case, that's called sheep in Tibetan. Uh, Samba. Plan who it is you are going to help get the same thing, and which Starbucks 
you're going to take them to, to talk about it. Okay. I gave this talk in Buenos Aires for hours, and this man ran up afterwards and he thanked me in a good suit. And I was like, well, what do you do for a living? He says, I'm the manager of all the Starbucks who want to shoot. <laughs> it means pick a neutral territory, okay? Don't pick their place and don't pick your place. It could be a park. I like Starbucks it's kind of anonymous. You know, um, so choose a person in your life who wants what you want. You cannot live without this person. You must find them. Okay? If you're looking for a boyfriend, who do you have to find? Someone who's lonely. Okay? Who's perfect? Where do you find them? Nursing home, packed with lonely people, okay? Go to a nursing home, all right? There are, there are hundreds, thousands of lonely people there, okay? Go there. If you want a boyfriend, go to a nursing home. Choose one of those people, okay? You can take them out to Starbucks also. It's a big trip for them. I had an old lady for 20 years. She's 87. We had a big party for her. We did jazz for her. She has a crush on Kevin. And she has a crush on Nick. And she has a crush on Johnny. I'm, I'm just trying to get in there. Um, serve, serve an elderly. Serve a lonely person. Pick them first. And then take them and make a plan. Say, I'll visit you once a week. Lonely people are like birds. Okay? Or animals that you see in the forest. They like regularity. Okay? They like, I'm coming every Friday. Okay, at four o'clock. Birds like that also. If my if I don't get up at the right time, the birds bang on my window. Okay, they're very persistent. <laughs> Hundreds, you know. Uh, so pick a person and be regular with them. Okay. The worst thing you can say to me, if you want to know how to round me up, there's a few ways. But one is to say, I don't know any lonely people. You know, and I'll say, I get a look at. You think about it for 24 hours and you check back in. <laughs> so then they think for 24 hours. Then they always come back and say, I found 10. <laughs> I found 10 lonely people. You just didn't ever think about them. Okay? They're all around you and you didn't even notice because you were lonely. You see what I mean? Anything you want, you're safe. There's always somebody else around you who wants it. Okay? There really is. You just never noticed because you didn't care because you were thinking about yourself. Okay? So that's number two. Number three is very simple. Help them. Help them. Help them. Do you have to succeed? No. Will you succeed? How are you going to succeed if you don't know how to get a boyfriend? How do you help somebody else? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's crazy. How do you get money? How about you give make money? What do I do? Just take them out to Starbucks. What should I do? Make suggestions about how they can make money. How can I do that if I can't make money? That's why I'm taking them out to Starbucks. <laughs> you have to try. Just try. That plant to see. The trying plant to see. Okay, got it? You just try. Give them moral support. I'll, I'll go out with you once a week. We'll make a plan for your credit card debt, you know? Even though yours is worse than theirs. Okay? <laughs> no, see, that's not contradictory. That's actually how it works. Okay? That's, if you think about it, it has to be like that. And it will always be like that. Okay? You don't have what you want, so you're helping someone else get it. And you're giving them advice to get what you don't know how to get. Got it? <laughs> okay. So, do that. Now, step number four is what we talked about last night. It's very simple. How many people, when they were falling asleep last night, did the meditation at the time? Wow. Awesome. So it was worth all the money, Chateri. <laughs> <laughs> to get one person's mind to change for like $400 is worth it. Okay? It's, it's rare. Right. Do it tonight. Okay, what was I talking about? So you, you went to the old lady, right? We had a nice birthday party. We had a wonderful birthday party, didn't we? That was awesome. It was really awesome. We spilled stuff all over her wine. I don't want that the next one. Um, when you go to sleep tonight, if you're Kevin, and you played her favorite 1940s songs, right? He's the only guy alive who can play all her songs. And uh, if you are Kevin, and you want to do step number four. Step number four is a secret weapon. Okay? Step number four is line number eight. Step number four is like step number eight. Got it? Before you go to bed, if you're on Kevin, 
think about the birthday party and what a cool time we had and how happy she was and how happy we made her. Okay? That uh, kind of reflection on a good seed that you already planted sharpens it. It's like a Starbucks coffee on a flower seed. And it just explodes. The seed explodes all night long. Your subconscious is working on the seed again and again and again. It's the secret to life. It's the secret to happiness. Okay? Anything you want. Just think about something you did for somebody else that was similar to what you wanted before you go to bed. And that's all. And it doesn't have to be recently. Okay? We had our birthday party in January, I think. We had it like a, a month earlier or something. Was it December? December? Yeah. Or it could have been last year. It doesn't matter. Okay? Those seeds don't get old. There's no expiration date on a seed. Before you fall asleep, think about something good you did for somebody else. That's like the teddy bear claw thing. Thinking before you go to bed about how you helped a lonely person will select the seeds for a boyfriend. And plop. And you bump into a monkey down. Seriously, I'm not kidding. Okay? And I'm not just talking about boyfriends, okay? I mean, you, you think it's silly for a Buddhist monk to talk about a boyfriend. I don't think so. The whole world wants those things. Everybody in the world would like to have a nice partner. Everybody would like to have enough money. Everybody would like to be healthy. And everybody would like to have a peaceful heart. Those, you can have them, okay? What are you going to do about save the world thing, okay? Then I'll stop. I promise I'll stop. Uh, somebody, the girl who got the boy, she came to me and she said, you know, I got the boy, but I have some misgivings about it. I said, what are the misgivings? She said, it feels a little selfish to have helped an elderly woman just to get a boyfriend. You know, that's not real charity, is it? It's more like a business. You know, I'll visit you if I can help into a boy as a partner. And I said, are you telling me you're not seeing her anymore? And she said, yeah, why should I go visit her? And then I said, oh, you're really stupid. Okay. Uh, there's a seed for meeting the boy, and there's a different seed for keeping the boy. And the seed for keeping the boy is to keep visiting the old woman. How long? You have to be alive. As long as you want the boy, you have to keep visiting him. Now you, she said, well, how, what's the seed for me to keep together with him? Obviously, visit her together. Go visit her together. I have friends who understand this. Every week, Becky does that with her boyfriend, right? They visit, she and Gunnar visit a, a lonely woman, a lonely man, woman in Phoenix every week, and to keep their relationship tight. New seats every week to stay, stay tight together, okay? Uh, last thing. So somebody said to me, it seems selfish, you know? This whole thing seems selfish. Now we have to go to link number nine, okay? What was the old thing? You are competing. You are competing with the other girls for this boy. Or you are competing for a, a, a promotion at work. Okay? Or you are competing to have the best headstand in Dharma King Film Club. Which is going to be a long jump for all of us. Uh, so, that's the old system. And that, that triggers negative seeds in your mind. Okay? That triggers bad stuff in your life. That triggers an unhappy life. The rest of your life will be unhappy, okay? How do you reverse that? If you just go to the nursing home and help the old woman, and then you come home and bump into it, because it's, and then you quit visiting her, that's a selfish thing to do. So really you are planting two seeds, aren't you? You will always get a boyfriend. If you visit uh, a lonely person, it must create a boyfriend. It will always create a boyfriend, okay? But if your motivation is selfish, self-serving, selfish, the boyfriend will be selfish. a selfish son of a gun. <laughs> okay? Understand that. It's very profound. Okay? It's one thing to get a boyfriend. It's one thing to get a boyfriend who you can live with. Those are different seeds. 
you got through the water? They would get three glasses of water. <laughs> they would come and say, no. And then what would happen? I asked this question in China. They got it trusted. <laughs> <laughs> this guy raised his hand. He says, he was weird. He had this leap in his mind. He had a leap of understanding, which is very Chinese, you know. Don't believe what the American newspapers say about Chinese. It's not true. They're beautiful, gentle, highly intelligent people. And they haven't been brainwashed by the newspapers and advertising yet, but we're introducing this. <laughs> so he's like, I said, what would happen then? And he raised his arm and he said, world peace. World peace. And I said, why? And he said, can you imagine? There will be lines of people waiting outside of your house. You know? Can I meet her today? No. Come back next week. She has an opening from two to two. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Okay. No, I gotta meet her this week. I I got problems. <laughs> I'm sorry. You have to go to the nursing home. People will look for other nursing homes, right? And they will become a a rarity, you know. There will be dealers who trade in the <laughs> They'll trade in the you know, addresses of old women you know, who don't have families, you know. And no, I'm not kidding. Uh, this stuff got started by a group in Norway. We have a group in Oslo. And uh, the Norwegian movie theater industry just announced an official policy that if any person under 65 comes to a movie with a person over 65, the older person is free. <laughs> okay. And that's, that, that's what happens when this kind of thinking starts to spread. Okay? And then the whole society begins to take care of elderly people. What about the people who want money? They will take care of people who are having financial problems. So it will become difficult to find a person who has a financial problem. And that will be the end of poverty in this world. Half the people are receiving money from the other half who want more money. Okay? Well, most war is caused by want, right? Most war is caused by disagreements about resources, right, or money. What would happen if everyone knew the system? And that's where the Chinese guy raised his hand. He's a businessman, hardcore businessman, hardcore said, world peace, it will be world peace. And they were crying, some of those business guys were crying. And it was awesome. It was so awesome because they got it. And in that moment, they had bodhicitta. Okay, so don't think some bodhicitta is like something like, some each other talking to you. It's not like that. It's reachable. It's practical. You can do it, okay? You can, you can change the world. How? Can you walk into the restaurant and say, I was thinking about going to the nursing home. Is it effective in convincing your friend? The thing, if not, you don't have to preach. Just walk in with the guy. <laughs> okay? You don't have to get up and discuss karma. Just walk in with the guy, and you will convert four people. <laughs> you know? It means you have to be an example. I have to be an example. Of what? If you're proposing that with the wheel of life you can change every aspect of your own life, have you done it? Or don't talk to us. Then go do it and come back when you've done it, okay? Come back and tell us when you've, when you've done it yourself, right? It's so cool. Why do people go to Dharma just yoga class today? Why do people like his class? He's a 70 something years old. He does a handstand with no hands. He doesn't have to go out on the street and say, I'm a yoga teacher. There's a picture in what? F. Car magazine. He's on a, what do you call this one? Uh, man, man, man of color with no hands, doing a headstand at 70 something, okay? So, what is your responsibility if you wish to serve the world? What is your job now if you wish to serve the world? What is your job? Make yourself happy. You have to be an example. You have to be an example, right? Of what? Happy. 
Okay? Just happy. That's all. Okay? People would look at you and say, I'm not going to go into that, but they'll say, I'm having what he's having. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole funny routine that I do, but I'm not going to When they see you, they'll say, I don't know what he's doing. I don't know how he did it. But he's happy. And he always has enough money. And he has beautiful relationships. And he's happy. He's always happy. He must know something. You know? He, he, he or she must know something. So what is your responsibility if you wish to help others in the world? It's the most difficult task that anyone can give you. You must become a person who is so obviously happy that everybody wants what you got. That's all. Good night. <laughs>